Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Candare Halloween Special 2024. I am Jeremy Colley. I'm Jack Doherty. And I'm Randy Hardenbrook. That was quite creepy, Randy. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Not so much in like a ghost way, but more of like a creepy pedo way, I guess. I saw I saw them cupcakes. <laughs> Got cupcakes in my van. <laughs> but hey, I'm trying to go I'm trying to go with the Crip Keeper theme. Come on, it's, it's Halloween, okay. motherfuckers. <laughs> well that makes sense then. Okay, that sound um, that was that was a pretty good impersonation there, Randy. Well thank you. I, I might have one for a change. <laughs> But, yes, back to the introduction, what we're doing uh, this year is the same thing we have done the past four years, is we invite people on to tell their stories of the paranormal, the unexplained, and just the downright fucking creepy. And we got a lot of good stuff this year, so much that we're breaking up the videos into three different parts. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to sit down with a six-hour YouTube video. And uh, very excited about it. Just trying out new things with the new video format we're playing out, or trying out, rather. But I want to remind everyone that, uh, again, this is not the first time we've done this. We've done this the uh, past three years in our audio format. If you go check out uh, episodes 414, 462, and 507. Uh, the, how long are those guys? Those were each, what, three to four hours long? A at of us? least, yeah. Yeah, just having people on to tell us stories of uh, their paranormal experiences, experiences with uh, uh, UFOs, stuff like that, cryptids. Oh, man, there's so much good stuff in there over the years. I'll put links to them in the description to this video. So check them out and the rest of our audio catalog because it goes back to 2013. Uh, this is our 11th year anniversary, guys. We just celebrated a few days ago from this Woo! recording. 11 years, guys. What better way to celebrate than with some creepy stories? I'm excited. Yeah. So let's get uh, part one started, which we're going to be calling Behind Bars, because both of our guest uh, stories come from one, a jail, and two, a prison. Both damn creepy places. And not just a jail and a prison, an old fucking jail and prison. So even creepier. And Randy and Jack have both been to uh, the first place we're going to be talking about uh, with our first guest, Olivia Nickel who is a, a part of the Delaware Historical Society and is a primary tour guide at the Delaware County Jail, where it's supposedly haunted, right, Randy? Oh, yeah. I think it's a little bit past supposed at this point, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. After hearing uh, some of Olivia's stories and hearing some of your recent experiences, I think it's safe to say that, yeah, something's going on there, right? Absolutely. I've been there. I think I'm a little bit of a skeptic still, because I have experienced anything right well i guess that's kind of why i uh was saying supposedly haunted because i i guess i hadn't seen or heard of anything super definitive but um well based on what you guys are about to hear in this story uh from olivia and randy seems pretty damning right <laughs> it was a little damn uh, yep oh yep, yeah <laughs> for sure and there might be some new exclusive uh stories from a recent jail experience I had uh, there at the historic jail on the uh, Halloween episode of our Patreon. So, uh, Is that we're doing a Halloween Patreon? What's this? Or, What's he teasing? Our, our <laughs> next our next Patreon, whatever. OK, well, now I'm excited and very intrigued <laughs> and see another place. Another thing you can find on our Patreon is uh, the footage of Randy and Jack going to the <laughs> Delaware jail last year and uh, doing their own paranormal exploring. <laughs> I was going to ask if that footage was anywhere, and I didn't think it was because it was only like a couple of brick walls in the dark. That was about it. Well, oh, it I, was more than that. Come on. No, it's, I I know, it's it like was, a good hour yeah. long, man. It's an hour long of me comparing every room to my house. I mean, come on. What? what I mean, you're mainly you? just staring at the <laughs> darkness, just looking at the occasional light zip pass. So, <laughs> so yeah. I, I mean, it's great. Check it out, people. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's quit talking and get right to our first story with Olivia Nickel. Olivia, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Okay, so I know that you uh, work for the Delaware Historical Society and uh, primary tour guide at the uh, Historical Delaware Jail. And uh, I'm curious, I know you have some experiences from when you were a child, but do you have experiences from the jail as well? Yeah, so I've been there for about a year and a half um, as a volunteer and I'm there a lot. And I would say that there's probably three times that I've had some really spooky stuff happen. Um, last 
year around Halloween, we were in the jail cells. And so um, when you go into the jail cells, there's like, you know, you walk in and there's two hallways that go to um, the two sets of jail cells. And then in that, there's also two sets of steps that um, go up to the upper set of jail cells. Okay. And so I was sitting on the left set of stairs and we were just kind of talking, asking questions. All the lights are off. It's dark. It's spooky. Um, and normally when we're in the cells, we don't actually get a whole lot of activity. It seems like the spookiest place, but sometimes it's just really dead quiet in there. Um, but that night we were sitting there kind of just asking questions and it seemed par for the course. And then all of a sudden we heard what sounded like a huge, like bang, bang, like, <laughs> like one of the jail cell doors had just been like slammed twice. Ooh. And I, of course, you know, I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I've got like, I'm <laughs> sat like this. I've got my shirt pulled up over. <laughs> you my acted face better than I would have. I'd have been gone. Right. And um, the other, you know, one of the Tri-C folks who was there helping us ghost hunt at the time, she looks at me and she's like, are you OK? And I was like, look, I've got my limits <laughs> and we're really approaching them. <laughs> so that's um, what this was, was a ghost hunt. When you said you were asking questions earlier, you were asking questions of the spirits. Yeah. So we were it was a public ghost hunt. And so that's what we were asking questions to the ghosts that were there. Um, yeah. And so, of course. I feel some sort of obligation as the historical society volunteer to go and check out the noises um, because I just want to make sure no one is like, I don't know, pulling some sort of a prank or especially if we're like inside and I hear a noise outside of the building during a ghost hunt, I feel like I should go check and make sure no one's kind of doing anything they shouldn't supposed to be. So I went and I checked and I didn't see anything and I, you know, just wanted to see if I could confirm that the sound was the jail cell door slamming. So I pushed it open really hard and let it slam and it sounded the exact same. And they're really, really heavy doors. So that's what I was going to say. Cause Randy and I were there last yeah. year and we <clears throat> right. for a ghost hunt and yeah, those doors are not light to just no, slam no. from like a breeze or something like that. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was very disconcerting. <laughs> Now, do you remember uh, the question that was asked right before you guys heard the slamming of the door? I could not tell you. I um, think that all I can remember was just freaking out a little bit. <laughs> of course, of course. So. <laughs> well, during those hunts, when you, they asked the questions, I mean, it is so quiet in there anyway. It just right. any little sound is like amplified. Mm. Damn. Okay. So <laughs> do you guys have any more questions on that one? That one's, that one's horrifying, but you said you had a few more. Um, right. Randy, Jack, do you have any more questions on this one? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right. Well, so let's hear some more of what happened at this jail. So Randy was actually present for the other one. Uh, this next one I'm going to tell. So we were, <laughs> is again, during a public ghost hunt. And so we were up in the hallway that kind of had, what was the family's bedrooms um, but is now kind of converted into office space where folks can rent out the offices. And um, one of the offices was open and there's, you know, one of our more well-known spirits there, we call her Paula. And that was kind of the room that she was originally seen in when they first made contact, they kind of found out that her name was Paula. And then there's stories, I guess, from, before we owned the building, maybe when it was um, the law library or something, when people were like aware of the spirit. Um, so we were so excited because I think it was one of the first times that we were able to go into the Paula room because yeah. everyone's been renting it out. Um, and so we had a bunch of people in there and then Randy was facing, you know, just out in the hallway and like facing down the hallway so that he could see everything. So I was by the door and every so often I would poke my head out and see, you know, if he was catching anything. And so at one point I poke my head out and I go, do you see anything? And he's like, if you look down the hallway, do you notice anything? And I thought, wow, what a horrible question. So <laughs> I looked down the hallway and I'm just, you know, I'm focusing and it looks like at the very like top of the hall, like at the end of the hall, at the top of the wall, before it meets the ceiling, it looks like something is kind of poking its head in no. and out. In and out. Back oh and forth. No. And God. so I went, I said, is it, 
is it the fire alarm? And he goes, <laughs> is by the fire alarm? And I say, yeah. <laughs> so in the meantime, we've got someone in the, you know, the other room that we're all hunting in and she's using dowsing rods. And so she's getting all these answers on the dowsing rods from other spirits. And so she's like, Oh, do you know the guy out in the hallway? And it's crossing to yes. And so I say, is he really tall? And it says, yes. <laughs> and so then uh, I, we just keep asking questions. And so she's like, you know, the more questions she's asking, the more freaked out I'm getting other people <laughs> in the groups go out to Randy and they're like trying to see if they can see what's going on down the hallway. And I think they also saw it if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they did. And so one of that, the other team members, one of the other tri C team members that were there had a thermal camera and, uh, uh, I'm not spoiling it, am I, Olivia? No, you can go for it. <laughs> so I took the thermal out and I'm thinking like maybe it's like lights from the cars because I'm looking down the, the hallway and that hallway tees and it goes, one side goes down to the jail cells, the other side goes like down to the main room. <clears throat> so I'm thinking like maybe there's like car window or whatever, but I hold the thermal on there and I see a dark black blue, like everything else is like, a solid color like you would expect and then you saw a silhouette of somebody at the top just kind of doing one of these numbers like creeping what? back and forth and i <laughs> i showed olivia and she's like no don't show me that shit come on <laughs> <laughs> oh how oh see we got to see that yeah I would say we could we'd clip it in right here but then i would want to react to it so maybe we'll put it in after this story is over and you could set it up again randy well i didn't okay what the like the the hand motion you mean the the video you said you you said the other day you had a video of uh no it was on the thermal camera but it it only take took snapshots and i wasn't quick enough to get it oh uh, okay just figured with camera that it was yeah. recorded no yeah Fucked sorry up, those, randy sorry <laughs> <laughs> i'm kidding <laughs> so tell me how okay from where you guys were standing like how far did, was the hallway down to where this thing was like how far were you away from it Probably 15, 20 feet, wouldn't you say? Yeah, like 20 ish. Yeah, those hallways aren't very long upstairs mm -hmm. r around where the stairs are, because I know yeah. right where that office is, too. With people coming in and out of the room to see what you were seeing, it did not sway uh, this thing's activity. It just kept peeking around the corner. Yeah, and it wasn't consistent. Like it would be like real quick a couple times, and then it, it wasn't like a consistent pattern or anything. That's why at first I thought it was like a car driving by like the reflection, but it, it not that high up and there wasn't anything that it could have been. Um, um, shit. How, how fast was it darting its head back and forth, like around the corner, like to peak? I'd say it varied. I mean, it, yeah. there were a couple times it was real fast and then, you know, very kind of slow and intentional. Oh mm. my God. Yeah. And it was just a, like a black mass. You couldn't like see any kind of like eyes or anything like that. No, like no, it was the just... dark figures and ghosts that were dragging oh, people away at the end. Don't need Kinda, that. That's yeah. all I can think of when I that every time I hear shadow people, that's all I think of is that one. It, it literally looked like a shadow. I mean, it was just a darker spot that just you could tell was movement. Wow. You, you know, I've I've watched a ton of these kind of videos online, and I exactly what you guys are describing. I've seen instances <clears> before in other people's videos where something just peaks really quick and then comes back and then looks quick and darts back. You know. Constantly peeking, you're describing it like uh, to a yeah. T, and you just like they watch that video and nice. just teasing us with it. <laughs> I know, like when he said that the other day, I thought, okay, cool, we got some juicy video to put on here. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, the thermals are weird because it doesn't actually take a video; it just you can take a snapshot. But I, I can't remember if I got one of, of that or not. It wasn't mine. I'd have to ask. Yeah, do that uh, if if you can find one, uh, we can put it in here so people. Uh, can get an idea oh my god i've okay. got to see that that's incredible but you i mean you saw it it looked like a like a silhouette of somebody wouldn't you say olivia yeah i saw it definitely the like it definitely looked like the silhouette of a head um but i will say you showed it to me i'm like one of the more scared people who likes to go look for ghosts like i like to go look for ghosts i certainly don't want to see one though <laughs> And yeah. so you showed it to me and I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. I don't need to see that anymore. <laughs> Get lost, Randy. <laughs> yeah, I was like, so I could see the head for sure. And then I'm not sure if I could see much else, but I 
pretty much looked at it at a glance and I was like, yeah, okay. That is just as scary as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And it's crazy that it just kept happening after people noticed it and people were coming in and out to get their turn at looking at it. So did you go down the hall then and like check around the corner and then just nothing? I did. Yeah. So I, I walked, I walked down, I looked to see if there was anything shining through a window or like any like branch moving or anything like that. And there was nothing. Oh dear God. It, and while she was doing that, we also had a bunch of cat balls placed around and they were going nuts too. And I will the say little light that, balls. Yeah. 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 And the, so the lady who was using the dowsing rods, she was talking to the two kid spirits uh, that we have in the jail. And they were saying that he's, like a protective spirit for them. Like he kind of hangs out and makes sure that they're safe. So that's kind of it. If I had to guess why it maybe wasn't deterred, it was because it was kind of looking out for the kids while they were kind of interacting with a big group. So, wow. but it's interesting because we interact with the kids pretty much every hunt. Cause they kind of really like to interact with everyone. And I don't always see him, but I guess I'm not always looking. <laughs> so right, wow. Okay, I guess it's okay. a good thing that you didn't it, like the shadow doesn't like you see horns in the shadow or something. <laughs> oh my god, not a giant that, that, cat or something. <laughs> oh god, yeah. <laughs> I would definitely fall into cardiac arrest if I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> bezel bub peeking around the corner. Hell no, 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 no. Thank you. Okay, okay, that's two stories. What's this third one? All right. So the last one was we were ghost hunting recently with some folks who work over at the Strand and they came in and it was a very slow night. And it was in the same hallway that I was just talking about upstairs. And we were all in the hallway, though, and we were facing down because I told everyone the spooky story about, you know, the guy peeking around the corner. Yeah. And so we're all sat there kind of just asking a bunch of questions um, and we're not getting too much activity, you know, flashlights kind of turning on and off every so often. And then we're all just kind of sitting there and I hear, <sighs> and I thought it was someone in the group, at, you know, kind of just doing it to see if they could get like a response. And the ghost hunter who was there with us that night goes, does someone whistle? And I said, yeah, it was, it was the, you know, one of the other guys in our group. And that guy goes, it wasn't me. And I said, yes, it was. <laughs> oh man! And he was like, no, it wasn't. And I was like, I could have sworn it came from like right where you are. And then um, one of the ladies that was with us said, I thought it was, you know, the other uh, historical society volunteer. And so she goes, I didn't even hear a whistle. So the ghost hunter goes, but, you heard the whistle, right? And I imitated it for him. And he goes, yeah, that. And I was like, okay, great. So just like oh. a disembodied whistle, I guess. <laughs> no. So my name's Olivia and I will no longer be doing any tours at all whatsoever. Oh, yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've done tours since then. It's just, uh, it feels like they've really ramped up trying to get me out of there. <laughs> was that the only time you heard the whistle? Yeah, that's it. <sighs> That story amazing. reminds me of that Star Wars meme with Anakin and Padme when he, she's like, Annie, did you see here that whistle? And he yeah. just looks at her and then she's like, you heard it, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that was you, right? Right? <laughs> I love that yeah. meme. Wow. Looks like we're going to have to get over to that jail. Damn. Yeah, for sure. Again, you need to go. Well, initially. I got to go for the first time. <laughs> yeah. I'm the rookie yeah. in this group. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So uh, you also said that you had some experiences from your childhood, correct? Yeah. All right. What do we, what do we got? So I grew up in a house that I believe was built in 1890. Oh, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I, as it turns out, I asked all of my siblings and, um, no one else has had experiences. It is me and my mom, as far as I can tell, um, which is weird, but, I will say the experiences that I had are very formative to why I like ghosts. I think they're neat. Um, but I was one of the creepy kids who um, at one point told their parents that there was a little boy who floated above my bed. Uh, <laughs> so I apparently came down. I don't remember this. I was very, very young, but I came down one day and I complained that I was very tired 
And my mom asked me why. And I said, well, it's the little boy who floats above my bed. He wants to play at night, but I'm, I, he scares me and I'm tired. And so she was like, the what? (laughs) Yeah. Right. So apparently I told her that his name was Alex and he comes and visits me every night and, um, he just wants to play, but I'm really afraid of him. So she told me to tell him to go away and I did. And then I never heard from him again. Wow. Well, that was easy. Better than retaliation. Right. <laughs> I, I've, you know, I said earlier, I've heard stories uh, on a lot of those videos I've watched of the same kind of thing where kids be like, are sitting there painting like a man hanging by his neck. And it's like, oh, it's the guy that's always hanging in the corner of my room kind of thing. Yeah, he trouble, he wakes me up at night kind of stuff. <laughs> and then, you know, in that same video, they put up a, like a camera on the kid's bed and you can see in the middle of the night, this kid is like talking to someone, arguing with someone like, no, leave me alone. And then like in this instance, this one video, this kid gets pulled by the leg by nothing to the edge of the bed. It was pretty horrifying, but. Yeah, no, thanks. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So do you, you probably don't remember this being so young or is this just something your mother told you? Uh, I don't remember it, but yeah, my mom told me about it. And I guess, I think my siblings have also heard the story. So Um, then we've also got uh, this one. I do remember very vividly. And so upstairs we have a bathroom and it's kind of got like, you walk in and there's a U shape. And so, when you go into the first little hallway, that's where like the toilet is. And then when you walk around the U and go into the other little hallway, that's where like the shower and the vanity mirror and all of that, that's where that all is. And so I was probably, it had to be like fourth or fifth grade and I was getting ready to go to school. And so I was brushing my teeth and I look up into the mirror and I see something that is like peeking around from the other hallway but it's like human shape but it almost looked like it was made out of like static and it had like two black eyes and then it just really slowly went away and i was so i'm sat there toothbrush in hand (laughs) horrified and i think it took my brain a second to fully process and the worst part is that i have to run past this thing to like get out of the bathroom and so i i don't really remember a whole whole lot of like i didn't look down the hallway when i ran but i screamed bloody murder down the stairs all the way downstairs to the kitchen and my mom is like trying to console me she's trying to figure out what's going on and my my brother comes in he's like oh no that was me i was wearing a halloween mask but i I'm a big fan of Halloween and we used to be so (laughs) like, we used to know in like six months in advance what Halloween costumes we were going to use. We used to just kind of have like the Halloween tub around sometimes. And like, we would play with like the masks or whatever. I don't remember any mask looking like a static person with two black eyes. Mm -hmm. Um, And it freaked me out. And so maybe I was young, maybe you can chalk it up to like childlike imagination and, all of that, but it has definitely been one of the creepy things from that house that has kind of just stuck in my brain. So, so, so your brother claimed it was him, but you're saying there's no way because the masks we have do not, well, they're not. Static. Right. And I've asked him recently, um, you know, within like the last year or so I asked him if he remembered that and he goes, no, I can't say that I do. Um, which I feel like also, if you pulled off like a really good prank like that on your sister, you might remember it. Cause it seems like it would be funny. (laughs) I know I would, (laughs) but that I remember super vividly and I, it freaks me out. Even like I've gone up into that bathroom recently, you know, if I've ever had to like, you know, go cat sit for my parents, that's kind of where the litter box is and stuff. And so if I've ever had to go in there, I always am just like, and I kind of just avoid looking in the mirror entirely. (laughs) Yeah. So when you said it was static, was it, do you remember, was it like moving like static or was it just kind of like scrambled? It looked scrambled. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So there wasn't necessarily movement to it. It just wasn't like real defined. Yeah. But it did TV static, like snow moving around. Well, yeah, it kind of, it's hard to describe. So yeah, it was kind of like, yeah, that like scramble, but almost like it was kind of moving. But I mean, it definitely did like 
in terms of like actual movement, like go back behind the wall that it was like peeking around. But in right, terms right. of like what it looked like, yeah, it just kind of seemed fuzzy and like, like a TV double static. exposure or something. <laughs> yeah, it was weird because it's like it's not like I could make out any sort of like facial features or anything. And it's not like I could see like its eyes weren't like human eyes. It was just like two big black holes, basically. Oh. Oh, oh no, thank you. No. Um, <laughs> uh, so the house, what do you know the history of the house? Is this like a house that's been in the family for generations or no? No. So it's my parents bought it, I believe sometime in the 80s. And I think whoever owned it before them was renting the house out. And I'm not totally sure on all of this, but um, there is some lore that it used to be like some clinic and i'm not sure that it would actually be like a clinic but maybe like a nurse or a doctor lived there and if people really needed them on like in a pinch they could come in but um that's kind of the best i've got i once tried to go to like the actual records office and ask about it but at the time i was in like eighth grade and i was like i think my house is haunted and everyone was like okay <laughs> here's some like really vague information on your house did that help and at the time i'm like a kid so i'm like yeah, it totally helped, and it sure. Did not. She's <laughs> weird. Like, yeah, exactly. your hair and push out the door. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's what I was curious about. If the name Alex ever came up, isn't that what you said the floating boy's name was? Yeah, yeah. I've never, I've never figured out exactly where you know what part of the house's history he was. A and part is this of. house in in Delaware? Yes. Oh yeah, it's haunted AF. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Delaware, whole oh, haunted. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, no you doubt. can build a new house in Delaware, and that shit's going to be haunted. <laughs> yeah, <really. laughs> no one's ever lived here before. It doesn't matter. There's ghosts everywhere looking. Just for a sightseeing, place to just passing through. We dug out the dirt, <laughs> filled it from dirt from somewhere else, built the house on it. It's still haunted. I don't know about all that. So, um, okay, any other experiences from your childhood? The way that the house is set up, if you're in the living room and you're sat in like the right place, you can see through to the kitchen. I've seen our cupboard doors just kind of swing open. Uh, my mom has, has seen like uh, what she thought is like, you know, one of us or my dad kind of go into the kitchen and she'll go in and kind of check on us and no one's there. Um, I used to hear footsteps a lot like downstairs when I was trying to sleep upstairs and I ended up, I used to sleep uh, with a TV on because I was, I would get freaked out at night because I was tired of hearing all the footsteps. So I would just turn on the TV to go to bed. Sure. So then I couldn't hear it. Um, otherwise the only other big one that I remember is that we were, my mom and I were watching TV in the living room and so to off of the living room, there was, you know, the old computer room back when everyone had a whole room dedicated to their family computer. <laughs> right. um, and so she and I were watching TV and she just mutes the TV. And I look at her and I'm like, what are you doing? And she points at the dogs who are both staring straight into the other room. And then you can hear like the computer chair is like rolling around. Oh, and she, I looked at her and she goes, you can hear it. Right. And I said, yeah. And she goes, okay. And then she just unmuted the TV and I said, oh, all right, cool. Yeah. So we're just going to keep going, I guess. <laughs> this is the sensitation that just must come with having to put up with it. I can't imagine just being like, all right, right cool. You heard it too. You know, let's get back to wheel. I, I cannot <laughs> imagine. Mm -hmm. I mean, that I would I would have to uproot my shit that night and be like, yo, can I come <laughs> stay with your place? You know? <laughs> I, right. I, I think I think with that stuff, there's like a level of okay, are we safe? Okay, fine. It's still right. creepy, but if if you're getting scratched and getting like freaking chunks taken well, out see, of your yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the thing, you know. I think I think there are ghosts, and I think then there are like evil entities, like posing as like ghosts or you know deceased loved ones to try to get you to give them permission to come in, you know. So not knowing shit about it, not being able to tell the difference, dabbling with any of it is like horrifying to me. <laughs> yeah, you know, because it could be something innocent, just some you know some innocent ghost that used to reside there, a person that used to reside there, or something really evil or maybe i'm just out of my fucking mind i don't know <laughs> no, i'm okay not. with stuff getting moved like cupboard doors opening don't be slamming shit 
That's what I don't want. <laughs> and don't be casting shadows, peeking around stuff at me. Just stay away. You can look in my cupboard or close the door, but yeah, don't be slamming and don't be showing me shadows or floating above my bed or any of that shit. No, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, man. And don't, no scratches or burns either. <laughs> <laughs> long, long list of demands there, Jack. You might just want to consider, like, <laughs> don't bug me at all. Smudging the place. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Salt circle your whole house. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. You know, over the years of doing this, almost everybody who talks about these situations, you know, handle it with such a grace that I could never possess. You know, I don't care if I don't have any other options. I'll live in a box. I'll live in a box. I'll live in the car. Yep. I, I, I'm not living with a ghost. It's not fucking happening. It's not. It's so funny because I always talk about. I'm like, yeah, dream house, Victorian, old haunted Victorian farmhouse. Sign me up. <laughs> nah, I mean, it sucks because those, just... those kind of houses are so nice too. Those old style houses too. So now you got to have something else to think about when if you really want to get one. Right. Just, just <laughs> watching... going on in here. I just started watching, uh, not that I'm watching it religiously, but the other day I found this couple on YouTube where they just bought this old school from like the late 18, early 1900s that's just been sitting, uh, you know, unattended for years. And they bought it really cheap and then they've been filming their renovation, you know, bring it, bring it to a place they can live in it, raise a family. And they, one of the videos, they start doing some history of the school and they start showing some of the classes, getting their like class pictures in front of it. And I thought, hell to the no. Yeah. <laughs> there is no way I would want to be sitting there watching TV and see these kids like running up the hallway or something in these like period clothings, you know? Oh, no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> But Olivia, thank uh, you so much for taking time to be here and tell us your stories. I can't imagine uh, experiencing half of that. Thanks for having me. I don't know. I feel like you kind of get used to it. It's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, the practical part of it all is like, okay, all of our money's invested in this house. There's a ghost. We can't just go pick a new house tomorrow. We got to live here. I get that. But <laughs> I guess I'd be the baby in the situation. Be like, oh, I'm going, I'm going to my parents or I'm going to my sisters <laughs> out. I'm out. Bye. <laughs> you know how I, on edge Jeremy's going to be when we go to the uh, prison. The now. jail. Yeah. Yep. yep. <laughs> I think I'll be okay. I'm not saying I won't be on edge, but I think I'll, I'll be all right. Now you'll see something out of the corner of your eye. Like it's like when we were in the basement, we had yeah. the flashlight and you would the way you would move the flashlight, it would cast shadows and yeah. it, it would feel like it moved. I remember we were talking about that and I saw like, that in the video. Like, Wait filmed. a minute. Yeah. But if, see if I, anybody oh go ahead. I was just gonna say, but being in that basement, like the second I went down in there, I wouldn't be afraid. I'd just be starting to like think I'm a ninja turtle because it looks like yep. the sewers <laughs> yep. from the ninja totally. turtle films, and that's yep. that's where my mind's going. Nee, 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 yep. nee, 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 nee. <laughs> and then Jeremy just sees a full body apparition walk by. I'm like, fuck this, I'm out. Yeah, yep. well, no doubt, no doubt. There'd be a Jeremy shaped hole in the brick. <laughs> like the first scene in Ghostbusters. Yep. <laughs> oh yep. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Oh, shit. oh, man. Well, Olivia, once again, thank you so much for telling us your stories and happy Halloween to you. Thank you. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. All right. And once again, that was Olivia Nickel. We want to thank her so much for taking time to be our uh, first guest on our Halloween episode, part one. That was uh, pretty creepy. I don't oh, like yeah. shadow people. I don't either. <laughs> I've never seen one, but I don't want to see one. And if I saw yeah, something but... darting its head around the corner, like uh, you guys were describing, Randy, I don't think I could be like, hey, kids, come check it out. I'd be like, kids, get the hell out. <laughs> Ow. I might get pissed after a little while and just be like, well, you just come out. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you Just come out. Yeah. <laughs> we're all broke. <laughs> But if you are interested in seeing shadow people, I mean, you can always book a private or public tour at the jail. Um, it's really fun. And the the public uh, tours, I think, start at like 30 or 40 bucks and the, the private's 300. But if you get like six people and split it up, it's really not that bad. So, yeah, yeah, not bad. Anyway, you look at it, it's a pretty fair price. And, you know, when you're going in there, even if you don't experience something, it's a very, very cool place. And especially that creepy ass basement, you're going to get the willies one way or another. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's a good time to just learn about investigating and get to play with toys, and yeah, it's, yeah. it's fun. So. Yeah, very cool. So uh, be sure to check Olivia out on Instagram, 
at Sit by the Fibber, which she does uh, crafts that I think uh, are spooky related, right? Is that right? Correct. There you go. So uh, we'll put her uh, her tag down in the description, uh, along with a link to uh, find out how you can be a part of the ghost tour at the Delaware County Jail. Our next guest is Lisa Roris, who is one of the lead investigators for the Tri-C Ghost Hunters. Is that right? Ghost Hunters? Did I say that right? Tri-C Ghost yes. Hunters? Yes. Yes. All right. Just wanted to make sure. Didn't want to misrepresent anybody. But she also works as a uh, volunteer at the Mansfield Prison here in Ohio, which is uh, famous for uh, being the place where the Shawshank Redemption was filmed. I think a, a few other films and music videos were done there. I know, uh, what was it? Mm -hmm. The Arnold Schwarzenegger, or not Arnold, but the uh, Sly movie, um, ex oh, not Expendables, Escape Plan. The first Escape Plan was awesome, and then there were a few sequels that went straight to DVD. One of them was filmed there. It was Sly and Dave Bautista. It was an awful movie, man. It was really, <laughs> yeah. really bad. Really For, selling it there, Jer. Yeah. I'm not trying to sell it. I'm just saying Sly and uh, Dave Bautista were at the prison filming shit, too. I think a Marilyn Manson video was filmed there, actually. It's a creepy place, man. Uh, like I have said a million times, even in the middle of the day, it's very creepy. And uh, Lisa has some stories, not only stories she's experienced while ghost hunting with Tri-C, but some creepy experiences in this uh, this whole prison that uh, I don't want to keep you guys from anymore unless you guys had anything to add before we let Lisa take the wheel. No? <laughs> okay. Well, we'll All talk. Right. I mean, I'll talk about Parapsychon and stuff after, but... But anyway, we're going to quit uh, yakking about it and just cut you right over to our conversation with Lisa Roris. Lisa, thank you so much for taking time to be a part of our Halloween special. Thank you for having me. Now, we understand you're a part of the, the Tri-C Paranormal Researchers Group and uh, that you've done many, many investigations over the years, uh, including some at uh, Mansfield Prison. We're anxious to hear some of your most titillating, most scary uh, encounters. I'm excited to share that. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Take us there. So, uh, yeah, my name is Lisa Roris. I am the lead investigator for the Columbus team of Tri-C Ghost Hunters. Uh, Tri-C stands for um, Cleveland, Columbus, and Cincinnati. So uh, we are one of the largest paranormal groups in Ohio. Um, so when we get case requests, we split up the state geographically and assign it to whichever team is closest to the client. Um, so that, that alone keeps us very busy. You mentioned the Ohio State Reformatory. Many of us are also volunteers there, uh, which oh, I am. Nice. I've been a volunteer there for about five and a half years. So I'll go up and I'll um, help out with tours or um, ghost hunts, private ghost hunts, uh, any special events they have up there. Um, but it's it's a real amazing building and I'm, I'm blessed to be a part of it. How cool. I've, I've been through the um, Mansfield Prison once and uh, i mean these guys have heard me talk about it a million times but i'll tell you even in the middle of the day that place is horrifying nausea. so i can't imagine being there doing an investigation so i guess we'll start um we'll start there you've had experiences at the prison yeah it, it rarely lets you down so um you know not every time but most of the time you're there there's there's um, at least one thing that makes you think, I think that might have been paranormal. So um, probably one of my prof most profound things that ever happened to me there uh, was about two years ago. And there was, I believe, four of us lady volunteers up in the up in the attic. Um, it was probably one or two in the morning. And everybody tells stories of in the attic, they see these balls of light. Um, some people describe them as moving. Some of them say they're stationary. Some of them say they're white, green, blue, red, whatever. Um, but if you've ever been up in that area, it is extremely dark. Lights are out. You cannot see your hands in front of your face. Um, we like to go up there and just sit and be still and listen. Um, but on this particular night, um, it was pretty quiet. But the four of us were up there and um, I kind of said a little bit snotty, not, not disrespectful, but kind of snotty. Hey, I've never seen these lights and I really want to see these lights because I think all these claims of, of these light anomalies, I think that it's just your eyes playing tricks on you because it is so dark in there. Um, within 20 minutes uh, of me saying that and kind of challenging the spirits that were there uh, to show me the lights, um, 
the best way I can describe it was a series of sparklers about 20 feet in front of us that were so intensely bright. But again, they were just a pinpoint of light. And I blinked and they it's like they shut off from here and they jumped across the room and they reappeared across the room again within 20 feet from us. And I blinked again and it was gone just like that. So Hmm. I think what is so weird and I play it over and over and over again in my head and and I'm still friends with the girls that were up there and we just cannot explain it. But I think what's so strange is, you know, when you're driving and there's like headlights coming at you um, or streetlights, you know, your, your eyes naturally have kind of that glare where it kind of casts some, a star almost of light. Mm -hmm. These pinpoints of light were so intensely bright, but my eyes didn't react that way. Uh, There was no star casting or whatever. It was just a very bright, intense pinpoint of light. And I describe it as sparklers because there were several of them kind of clustered together. Um, And it was that brightness, that intensity, like if you were looking really close to a, a 4th of July sparkler. So we all were kind of sitting there And we were frozen. We were absolutely frozen. I I couldn't even believe what we just saw. Um, And then we were running some audio there. And and when I see things that are a little bit surprising or catch me off guard, I am known to drop some F-bombs and some other (laughs) voice language. So as you should. Yeah. So the girls, the girls crack up. They're like, that recording's hilarious. You know, it's like this slew of like 15 bad words from my mouth, all all, you know, all in like a a short amount of time. But, But then we were, you know, on the recording, you can hear us. Did you see that? Did you see that? We all, all, there were four of us, three of us saw it. The fourth lady was actually looking down at her recorder. She missed it, but she was so happy that we had experienced it because she had experienced it in the past. Um, So she knew, she knew just by our reaction that we really did see something. (laughs) We spent probably the next half hour trying to debunk that. I had no logical explanation. And another odd thing that I I can't wrap my brain around is, again, if you've ever been up in that attic, there is some metal ductwork up there from the HVAC system. Mm -hmm. Um, Those sparklers were, you know, I call them sparklers, right in front of that ductwork. And you would think that it would reflect or illuminate the ductwork. Yeah, right. It did not. It did not. Um, and further reflection kind of on that night, I got this feeling as I was looking at it, not so much that a spirit was trying to manifest, I guess, I guess to show himself. It, it gave me the thought in my head that it was almost like something was trying to come over from a different time dimension or something. I don't know why I've never even had that thought before, but overwhelmingly like that was my feeling that like something was trying to come into our world through what i don't know a portal i don't know i believe in portals um but i i, I can't explain it i still can't explain it so that was probably one of my most profound things that have ever happened and i've investigated there oh my gosh probably 50 times <laughs> that's the only time you've seen it that is the only time i saw the light and and you know i'm i'm usually and I, I was that night too. I'm very respectful to the spirits because they were once living people, but I kind of, kind of had that attitude like, okay, guys, you know me, I'm here all the time. Kind of do me a favor and show me these lights that everybody's talking about because I, I just don't believe it, you know? So that's kind of the, the take that I, I took on it and, and how I explained it to the spirits. And like I said, within 20 minutes, I, we saw those lights. So Can't explain it. When you say sparkler, you know, I I guess you already kind of explained why you used that description. But in my head, that gives me the impression that was kind of like flickering, maybe throwing stuff off of it. Yes, but but I I would say in a small compact area about this big. So let's call it maybe a dozen pinpoint lights in, in an area this big. And were so they this, stationary? Were they like moving around each other? Were, did, was this like in the middle of the room in the air? Was it, you said near ductwork. Yeah, work. so I would say it was in, it was in the middle of uh, the room vertically. 
uh, but over to uh, one side of the attic. So I was all the way in the back of the attic looking towards, if you guys are familiar, towards the uh, chapel area. Um, and it had first appeared on my right hand side, again, hovering about in the middle. And I would say it didn't move too much. Again, it was kind of coming in and out of brightness. Um, and then again, I blinked and immediately it had like shut off here and and gone to the left side of the room still middle range of the room vertically and sparkled again and then blink of the eye it was gone so and was it just like a white light or because you said other people reported seeing all different colors of lights was there yeah a color to so it? for for me it was it was uh like a white maybe a little bit of a golden hue again think of a sparkler where it's not cr quite white it's a it's a little bit almost golden um that that is how i remember it um and and it's funny because the lights there's so many different um reports of it some lights roll towards you some are free floating um some are shooting you know so so everybody's reported different things um i guess having that experience now i don't think that they're fully you know what i think that yeah. those people saw something had their own experiences even though it differed from what i saw i i believe them 100 percent now <laughs> Wow. That's almost like something that you could try to debunk just saying, well, it's just your eyes adjusting to the darkness, but having two other people sit there and be like, did you just see that? Holy exactly. shit. I see it too. Yeah. yeah exactly. That's totally different. And so all these years, all these reports, um, you know, I really thought it was people's eyes playing tricks on them because it is so dark, so very dark. Um, but I can tell you that we were in that room for, for quite a while um, before and after, and the dozens of times I've done that before. And, and that was the one and only time that I saw something like that. So I think that if your eyes play tricks on you, I think other times I'd been up there, I would expect to see something similar, like, you know, my eyes adjusting or something like that. This, this definitely was something, but I don't know what it was. Your was tone might've made someone mad and pulled them through. So. You know, and that's why I said, I prefaced it by saying, I'm always respectful to them. And a matter of fact, every time I'm there volunteering, I make it a point to go up there and I tell them hello. And I usually warn them on, hey, we're gonna have a big group in here tonight. Um, we'll make sure they're respectful. You know, it'd be great if you come out and talk to us. So I always talk to them. So I would like to believe that they know me uh, or they recognize me just like they do some of the other volunteers. Um, so that's why I wanted to preface it by saying I was definitely respectful, but I was a little sassy about it. <laughs> <laughs> and was there any uh, sound omission no. from this? It was completely silent. Just complete silence. Just visual. Complete Damn. silence. You mentioned you had the other lady was looking at equipment. Did you guys notice any type of spike in like the EVP or temperature so, drops or anything? I'm glad you asked that. That's funny. We have found the more equipment that you run up there, the quieter they are. Wow. Okay. <laughs> it's like they don't want to be busted. So <laughs> that night, I don't believe, I, I really don't think that we had any K2s or anything. We were running an audio recorder. Okay. And the reason why uh, one of the gals was listening to it is she thought she heard a disembodied voice or a disembodied breath or something. So she was playing, she was trying to see in the dark uh, to play it back and actually listen to it. So that's why she was not looking up. Got it. Um, but yeah, that's what we found. The more equipment that you use up there, the the sh the more shy they are and, and they stay way back. Hmm. Okay. Wow. Wow. I don't know how I'd react in that situation. I mean, I, I guess you've heard the stories you were waiting for it to happen. So I guess in that scenario, you know, it would be exciting to see, but to somebody who had no idea, just sitting there hanging out in an attic and then boom, that would be quite yeah. terrifying. Wouldn't it? We have had guests, um, run out of there. Um, and you know, it, it, there's that the light anomalies are not the only thing that happens up there. A lot of times um, you're looking down towards the chapel and there's just a little bit of ambient light coming in from that chapel door down there at the end of the attic. And again, could be your eyes playing tricks on you. 
But you look down there and so many times it, it appears that something blocks out that ambient light and, and walks either left to right or right to left passing through or, or in front of that, that doorway. Um, lots of sounds up there. It's concrete floor up there and uh, kind of dusty floor from rocks and rubble that have kind of fallen from the ceiling and such. So when you walk in there, it's a very distinct dusty, rocky um, footstep noise. And we'll be sitting, literally sitting in chairs, not moving. And you'll hear like scuffs or actual steps coming either towards you or walking up behind you. Hell so, no. Geez. Oh yeah. Hell it, it's no. unnerving. I, I do not go up there by myself. Call me a chicken, call me what you will. But um, <laughs> for me, I need at least a few people up there with me. It's yeah. definitely one of the more haunted areas uh, up there at the Ohio State Reformatory. I'd be diving out a window. There wouldn't be any time to look for There stairs. are no windows up there. <laughs> Randy, Jeremy, hold my hands. We're going up here. <laughs> <laughs> Thunder buddies for life. Thunder buddies for life. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Now, when you say the attic, um, and you also mentioned the chapel, this, you know, when you first said attic, I was in my head thinking this was the attic above like where the warden and his family live, but there, this is an attic that is actually like over the cell blocks or it is. You... it's over, it's, it's over West cell block. Uh, wow. So it is called the West attic. Yes. And that's, yes. that's up there. That is up there now. And yes, it absolutely is. If you're taking the stairs of the cell block, it's, I believe it's five flights up. So oh, geez. it's definitely a hall. Um, but you know, again, no windows up there. Um, and it is a enormous, enormous room. So we always like to just go all the way back and just sit and stare at the door and see what we see, what we can see. And is awesome. that open to the public? It is. So there's different, um, uh, tours that they offer there. There's daytime tours. There's also some specialized tours that you can pay a little bit extra ticket price and kind of go behind the scenes. Uh, so you would have to check which tour ticket you are buying uh, to make sure that the attic is included. But there are some tours that it's not included in. But if you are there for like a ghost hunt or an overnight, that area is always open. But the day tours, depending on which day tour you take, it may or may not be open to you. I see. Hmm. Okay. It's been a long time since uh, we were there. And when we were there, I don't even think we had a tour guide. It was just kind of like, all right, go in there and have fun. You know, uh, Absolutely. you, you and could that die. We're the, not liable. What's that? That is one of the tickets that you can buy. And then there are guided tours as well that have a little bit more of that access behind the scenes that not everybody gets to see. Yeah. I need to go back. It would be fun. We yes. should all go. It's, it's amazing. Tell me when you're going, I'll go with you. <laughs> that would be <laughs> awesome. That would be awesome. So um, <clears throat> as far as the prison goes, uh, any other, any other experiences there or? No. Um, you'll hear, like, if you're walking in the cell blocks, you'll hear whether it's on the ground level or even up on one of the tiers. Um, I like just walking by myself. It is dark and it is not for the faint no. of heart if you are scared of heights. Um, I know my husband, if we go during a day tour, he won't even go up there because he's scared to death. But yeah, same. Um, but at night, you know, I like to just walk those tears. And sometimes, again, could be my mind playing tricks on me, but sometimes it sounds like somebody's walking behind you, which is a little unnerving, but exciting all at once. Um also, I like to pay attention to just my senses and what I'm feeling walking by each cell block. I could walk past 20 and not be creeped out. And then for some reason, I'll go by one and I get the mad chills and like, oh, God, what am I doing? I don't want to be up here by myself. And then you'll go to the next cell and you'll be perfectly fine. Um, I can't explain that. So does that mean there's a spirit in one of those? I, I just don't know. Um, but that is fun when when you're feeling braver. That is fun. We've also wow. walked those cell blocks um, and out of nowhere, like we'll, we'll have strong smells of um, smoke, like a, a cigarette smoke. And then uh, also one other time, uh, another uh, volunteer and myself were walking on the sixth tier and 
I I was walking in the and the cells were here and like this would have been open over here. I felt someone go like this to my hair. Oh, I, mean, wow. I saw my hair go up. <laughs> uh, I saw my hair go up. I felt it. Um, and then I started walking a little bit faster. <laughs> See, that would just be my thing. Like I could have all the guts in the world be like, yeah, let's go in here. Let's, let's go up yeah. to that catwalk six tiers up or whatever. But the yeah. second somebody flipped my hair, something flipped my hair. Like I, I would just be chicken shit so quick and I wouldn't yeah. be able to get out fast enough. I think I would die. I, I think I would probably yeah. accidentally tumble over the rail. Like I couldn't, <laughs> and it's such a long way out of there too. Yeah. You know what and, I mean? And I'm, I, I'm so glad that I was with somebody that evening because if that would have been one of the nights that I was walking by myself, uh, I think I would have completely freaked out and started running. But I, thankfully I was with somebody um, and he was feeling kind of creeped out too. And he was saying he was actually in front of me and I was walking behind him because those catwalks are so tight. Right. You can't walk two side, you know, side by side. You have to do, you know, uh, in front or in back of each other. So I was in the back, he was in the front. And right before this happened, he said, you know, hey, could be my eyes playing tricks on me, but I swear I keep seeing somebody peek in and out of these cells, like oh, looking to, to see us come. So, oh, no so this way. was all kind of building up. That was the same night. So he's saying that all of a sudden we smell the cigarette smoke. And within 15 seconds, somebody, you know, tossles my hair. So um, so it, very exciting, but very unnerving. When you hear the footsteps behind you, do you just sit there and kind of Yep, there's some footsteps behind me and keep going, or do you kind of just like uh, and then turn around and hope that there's nothing there? I wish I could say I'm really brave. Uh and I should be for being a paranormal investigator for so many years. Um, but I kind of am a chicken, especially when you're by yourself. It's a completely different vibe when you're by my, by yourself. Um I will turn around and and look because I want to see. Um, and of course, you never see anything. But then I just start walking faster. <laughs> I'll be like, I'll turn around. I want to see. But I don't know if I want to see. Exactly. See I'm, really hoping, I'm really hoping I don't see anything and I'm out of here. <laughs> Damn. <clears throat> so when you do these walks, are you running like a, are you just using a flashlight? Are you running a thermal infrared? Like what's your kind of go to? You know, it really depends on, um, I guess this is true at the Ohio State Reformatory and any place that that I really investigate. Um, you know, I, I really go with what area am I doing and what are the claims there? Okay. Um, so, you know, if we're on one of the tiers or one of the rooms or, again, a different venue that there's, um, you know, shadow play or whatever, you know, I'm going in with my video, uh, my video, my night vision video camera and and maybe a digital camera as well. So okay. um, I, I really tailor my equipment based on what venue I'm at or what building I'm at and what particular room we're investigating. And then I kind of tailor it to the claims there. But what I like to do is make sure that I'm always I usually am with multiple people, maybe three to four. And we try to run various pieces of equipment. So just in case, you know, there's a first time for everything. So if, you know, there's something new that happens in that area, hopefully we do have it covered with, um, you know, whatever, or an EMF or a audio recorder or what have you. So, uh, but for me personally, I try to tailor it based on the claims of that area. Got it. Okay. You mentioned a little bit ago that, you know, you've been ghost hunting for years. You've been doing this for years. So, Let's look back over the years and let's hear a few of your creme de la creme experiences, like the most <laughs> horrifying, most blood curdling kind of things. You're nodding your head like you've got it all yes. lined up. You already oh, know what it yes. is. <laughs> yes. It was actually my very, very first ghost hunt. And wow, so this is the experience that, that really turned it on for you. This is what and did it. you can. I mean, there is nothing in all these years that is compared to it. And I compare every experience uh, to that that particular experience. Um, unbelievable. So I think it was like 2008, 2009. Um, I had a couple buddies that I worked with um, at my company, and I knew they were interested in ghost hunting as well. And one of them had seen something in the newspaper about um, a little fundraiser that was going on 
uh, by a historical society at an old abandoned elementary school in Croton, Ohio. So um, it said, hey, come and ghost hunt, you know, bring your equipment if you have it. And it was it was around Halloween time. So um, so we didn't know quite what to expect, but we're like, hey, we we love this stuff. Now's our chance. So, you know, we we get tickets, we show up and it, it was very creepy. I must say um, it was almost like school just ended and nobody came back. You know, there's there's chalkboards, there's chalk on the chalkboards, there's desks, there's chairs, there's papers. It was it was wow, like bizarre. Chernobyl was, almost. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it was very bizarre. Um, and, and again, they were raising funds, to, uh, the Historical Society, uh, to hopefully renovate it. I don't I think they were going to try to turn it into a community center for for seniors or something like that. So all the ticket uh, prices, that's what it was going towards. So. Um, but it, I got the feeling just from what they were describing that it really had not been investigated um, very widely, maybe by just this little group that was helping run this little fundraiser. I think only their group had been, ever been in there maybe a few times. So um, we kind of split our group up. Myself and my two buddies stayed together, though, and it, it was like all night like knocking in response when we asked, um, footsteps, uh, disembodied voices. Um, you know, it was just, it was a lot. Um, K2 hits and I know K2, you know, I know that that is very subjective. Um, we, we tried to pinpoint it to a, a live wire or, uh, you know, an outlet or something like that. Um, uh, what was interesting about the K2 hits was, it would count for us. Like we would ask questions like how many spirits are here? And it would be like one, two, three, four, five. And it would count. Oh, wow. <laughs> and we would ask other questions in between there and then go back to that question to see if we got the same count. And we always did. It was 11 in this particular Damn. room that we were in. Mm. We were in, we were in a bathroom on the lowest level of the, um, uh, of the school. Um, so again, this, this K2 session went on for quite a while and it was, it really acted like it was responding to us. I mean, that was really the, the feeling I got. It was even trying to trick it and ask similar questions to see if we got the same answer and we would, and this went on for quite a while. So the nights kind of, uh, you know, winded down, we're sitting in uh, that bathroom and we are looking out into the hall. And what our point of view was, is looking out in the hall, there was a staircase coming down from the level above us, uh, had open rungs on the stairs. And again, there was three of us. And uh, one of the gentlemen was uh, changing out, I think, an SD card on his uh, digital camera. And then the other gentleman and I were looking straight forward. If I would have blinked, I would have missed it. But I saw a shadow figure coming down those stairs. And again, it was my first ghost hunt. I was an even bigger wuss then than I am now. <laughs> and again, cuss words, F words, everything. And I landed on top of this guy's lap because I was like, get me out of here. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, did you see that? And, and he was speechless. He saw it. And... There was something very, very unique about the shadow figure. And once he and I calmed down and caught our breath, um, and the other guy was so disappointed that he was looking down and he missed it. Myself and the other gentleman that actually saw it had, had an idea at the same time. We were like, don't say what you saw. Let's have this other guy take us individually and we described to him what we saw because he wasn't looking. We haven't had a chance to talk. We haven't said this is what we saw. Let's go independently and tell him what we saw. We both did that. And he comes back and we're like, well, and he said, you guys saw a man walking down the stairs. You couldn't see his legs. He had a plaid shirt on and what? he had a, and he had a beak. For a nose, what? Like That's are you crazy. like the old like the old timey like doctor like mask with doctor. the big beak? No, everybody thinks that when I describe that. No, it was like a pointed bird beak, but like man size because he was a man. Huh. 
Now, if we hadn't seen it, how in the world would we have described the same exact thing right. to, to this other guy? I mean, so so for me, I mean, and, and when I tell the story, I'm like, see, that that's how you know we're not lying because we both <laughs> described the exact same thing. And again, you couldn't make out the legs. It's almost like it was it was dark, obviously. His legs just kind of faded away in the darkness. So you really couldn't see from waist down, but you could tell that he had a plaid shirt on and you could see the beak. What the and fuck? again, if if we would have blinked, we would have missed it. It was there one second, blink, gone. Um, so, so I can't explain it. When you say shadow person, you know, the, the first thing that comes to my mind is just like a black mass, maybe in the shape of a person. But if, you, if you're yeah. able to see plaid shirt and stuff, I mean, this is a full on yes. apparition. This is... Yes, a and bird the only man thing, apparition. The only thing I, the only reason I don't call it an apparition, is because I, I didn't see like um, skin tone or facial features other than the beak, like like I see you guys, you know. So everything was very black, um, and you could just see his outline. With again, with the exception of that plaid shirt, we could make out the the plaid shirt, but the face there was no you know, ears that we could see, it was just black with that beak shape. Um, just the way that he was kind of standing, we both got the impression that it was a, a male shadow, a male figure. Wow. Wonder so if was it almost like, uh, Freemasons used to meet at that school back in the day and have ceremonies where they wear like weird fucking heads and stuff. I wonder. <laughs> I mean, after we kind of caught our breath, we went up, we asked the guys there and they said nobody had ever, you know, had a claim like that. Um, I think at the time they had, you know, maybe it's this guy, maybe it's this guy, you know, they didn't know, but uh, they were they were taken back by our, our claim because nobody else had ever reported that. So it was almost kind of like a film negative. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. a good way to describe it. Man. And, you know, I'm going to I'm going to regret saying this, but the people that were kind of running the event, you know, I think that they had audio recorders everywhere. And there were a few times in the night where we had made some comments like, you know, these guys are, yeah, you know, <laughs> you, she, and, you know, I, I wish that <laughs> we need to come back without them. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but, um, if we did, it didn't occur to us later because we followed up with them and we were like, we've got to come back. Please let us come back. You know, we'll pay whatever. And they would never get back to us. And it was like, <laughs> I wonder why two months later <laughs> yeah. or something. They're like, we, we all came to the realization. We're like, um, we think that there was audio recorders and we may have called them some names. <laughs> we may have some made some bad remarks throughout the evening and they're probably like, this guy's are assholes. We're not inviting that. Yeah. We didn't say it was the ghosts that said it. We didn't say nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I could say mimic. that it was a doppelganger that was using my brain. Yeah. <laughs> Man, all these these disembodied voices are so negative. Jeez. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Don't judgy. <laughs> <laughs> you you could just blame it on the fact well i guess if you were naming them individually i said every time you said every time you see you thought you saw something it was just a string of obscenities you could just blame it on that <laughs> yeah. oh i'm yeah. just seeing a ghost yeah, yeah. i could tell them i had some sort of a medical problem too yeah. that that i was seeing a ghost while i was simultaneously thinking you were a douchebag exactly <laughs> i have spirit tourettes okay I, yes absolutely <laughs> <laughs> so I do feel terrible about that. And, uh, and, and I learned my lesson now, you know, whether you see recorders or not, you might as well bank on the fact that they're recording you. So keep it clean. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Where was that again? Uh, it was at an abandoned school in Croton, Ohio. Croton. Oh, I've yeah. never even heard of that. What, what part of yeah. Ohio is that? Oh gosh. I don't even remember. Uh, <laughs> I'd have to look it up. I'm, I'm the underside. <laughs> <laughs> it took us like an hour and a half to get there from Columbus. So, okay. okay. So not yeah. too far off. And I wasn't driving. That's why I wasn't paying attention. Gotcha. Roger. <laughs> wow. Now that's a good one. That's a first, I think, in all of our Halloween episodes. I've never heard anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, what else What else have you got uh, there, Lisa? I'm so curious to hear what else is, you know, on par with that. Yeah. So, you know, obviously those, those couple experiences, those are like the creme de la creme. And... Um, if you guys have ever done paranormal investigating, most of the time it's very boring. Most mm -hmm. of the times you're sitting in the dark asking the same questions and nothing's happening. Um, 
So those definitely are the exceptions to the rule. But, um, you know, collectively through a lot of residences that we do, um, if we are going to capture uh, some evidence, uh, usually it's through our audio recorder. Um, so a, a lot of these houses or even private businesses that people ask us to come in and, and investigate for them, um, I would say three-fourths of the evidence that we do collect ends up on that audio recorder. Um, so that's like my favorite piece of equipment because that's I think that that's our biggest chance to actually capture something. But, um, you know, it's, even as something as we were in a house a few years ago and I had said, hey, I put my recorder down here. Um, you can come over here and talk to me. Where are you? And you play back the recording and it says, I'm standing right next to you in a whisper. Oh, hell um, no. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and of course, you know, we were not doing live review at that time. So, um, you know, I didn't even review that audio until like a week after I had been there. And I'm like, holy crap, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm taking the clip and I'm sending it to the team that was there. And I'm like, everybody check your recorders at this timestamp. And, and I think one other recorder had caught it that was actually standing on the other side of the room. And you could tell that there was more distance from their recorder, but oh, it was man. right on top of my recorder. That's insane. Wow. And and yeah. the voice, could you tell if it was a uh, adult, child, uh male, female? I would say it was a male. Um and I would say it was probably an adult if I had to guess. It's mm -hmm. so hard when a lot of times they come through as whispers cuz I, you know, my theory is that it takes a lot of energy for them to do that. So rarely do you have them talking like you and I are, but um, it was more of a whisper. Um, but if I had to guess, it would be a, a male adult. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I don't know if I'm going to go with you ghost hunting anymore. Like, <laughs> I don't know how I'd handle some of this stuff. But of course, that's something you didn't realize until you were home. Like uh, you said about I, a week later. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, I think if, if I would have done the live review right there, um, I, not that it would have run me out of there. Um, and, and looking back, I kind of wish I did do the live review there because then I could have said, oh, okay, then who are you? And I heard you and, yeah. and, you know, continue on with that line of questioning. And, you know, that is, we, we have started doing some of those live review sessions. So. Yeah. But if you were sitting there and you heard a disembodied voice, like right in your ear, instead of having to refer to the recording for it, Yes. Then you're going to fly out the window, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just, yeah. To, just had to clear that up because I yeah. would too. And, and there are some really brave uh, members on my team where they just don't get rattled. Um, you know, I, I'm jumpy for being a paranormal investigator. I'm jumpy. I will admit that. <laughs> you know, you said earlier you're a wuss. And I thought, how is that possible? Like sitting here, listening to your story, your first experience, you saw a bird headed man in plaid and were like, you know what? This is for me. Like that'd yeah. have been it for me. That'd have been yeah. it. I will Absolutely. never do this again. I yeah. vow to never do this again. Yeah. Uh, well, well, and you know, it's, it's like an adrenaline rush. So it's, uh, it's almost like an addiction. And, right. you know, I have been on a, an investigation in probably I'd say three or four weeks and I'm itching to get back at one, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. you know, sometimes we go and we do these fun, we call them fun investigations where we're not having to report back to a client. We're there for, for our own experiences and research. Um, but a lot of times we, most of the time, the investigations that we are on are because people have contacted us and said, hey, this is what's going on in my home. I need help. Will you please help me find answers? So a lot of those uh, cases come through our website. And again, we split it up geographically throughout Ohio. Um, and in my process usually is um, being a team lead, I. I'm one of the ones on our team that will actually reach out to that person and, and talk to them about what's going on. And I, I love Zoom because I usually do Zoom sessions with them so that I can see them face to face. I can see if they look genuine. Um, you know, it, are they looking at me in the eye? Are they telling me the truth? What's their body language telling me? And, and really, I just I let them talk. I'm like, just tell me what's going on. And most of the time they'll sit there and rattle without me being able to get an edgewise for like a half hour. 
So once they kind of got that out of their system, I kind of refer back to my checklist and say, okay, we talked about X, Y, Z, but now I have some more specific questions. And I'll go just go through the questionnaire with them um, on experiences and who lives in the home? What do they know about the property and the history? Um, you know, is there is there anybody in the house going through puberty? Um, you know, it's it's a wide array of of questions. Um, and I take Boy, I've got a here. question after that last one there going through puberty. Like, yeah, <laughs> so we have found um, that especially females going through puberty, um, there there could be an increase of activity. I'm not really? saying that it happens in every single home, uh, but we have found that that sometimes is a catalyst uh yeah. the hormones the the um i whatever is going on with you know <laughs> their puberty or whatever i don't know if it's a catalyst or um gives like a your hypersensitivity energy. or something like that right I, I don't know and and again it doesn't happen all the time and we certainly can't blame activity on that um every time but it is something that we note. and let's face it there's no way to prove that that's what's causing it but it right. is something that we take note of so if i have a case that um there is a pubescent uh teenager in the house with the parents permission what i like to do is we'll investigate without that teenager in the house see what we get and then with their permission and i usually have the parents come in with them bring that that teenager back in and see if there's any difference in activity wow. if there is okay maybe they're you know maybe they are kind of giving it more energy um, and more oomph to do something a lot of times it doesn't change the activity, um, but it's just it's just part of our process. It's it's kind of checking those boxes. OK, we tried this. We tried this. We tried this. But um, but I do want to point out that not all places are haunted and we don't go into all these places thinking that they're haunted. We go into these places trying to find logical explanations uh, of the claims. So, you know, oh, I hear this this banging noise in the bedroom every night at 10 o'clock or whatever. OK, well, um, how can we debunk that? Well, we'll make sure we're there at 10 o'clock at night. We'll ask questions. We'll see if something bangs back at us. Um, it, you know, is there mice in the walls? You know, or do we see any any evidence of like rat droppings or, or whatever? So, again, we want to try to um, check off those boxes, try to debunk it. If we can't debunk it, it could be paranormal. It could be not paranormal. We're not going to say just because we didn't find an explanation that it is paranormal. Right. But sure. we will keep an open mind. And say, okay, well, we couldn't. We could explain that. So that's that's noted, and we're going to move on to the next room and and try to debunk whatever claims are happening in that room. I respect that so much, so much, because there's so much speculation around this kind of thing already, you know, but, you know, and there's so many people that like are the complete opposite, go into it. Every little creak, every little knock is, <laughs> oh, we got yeah. something, we got something, yeah. you know, <laughs> uh, I love that angle. And uh, yeah. that's what's going to make me pay attention, <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah. And I think it, it builds our credibility as well um, in the, you know, among our, our paranormal community, um, because they, you, they're people, teams do have reputations, good and yeah. bad. Um, and and we really focus on having good people on our team, good hearted people, honest people um, that you know, don't call everything paranormal. And that, and they're going to go in with that skeptical mind and try to find explanations for things. I love that. And and do you guys have a, uh, I'm, I'm sure you have a YouTube or a, or a website that people can reference? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, tcghohio.org. That's tcghohio.org. And you can fill out questionnaires on there if you want us to come and investigate. And you can also fill out um, applications if you want to be considered to join one of our teams. Oh, wow. And uh, we also can't uh, forget to mention Parasycon. Would you mind talking about that a little bit? <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, Parasycon uh, is held at the Ohio State Reformatory. And it is, um, I want to say the third week in May. I don't have it in front of me. Uh, but check out our website. We have the dates on there. Um, we bring in paranormal celebrities, uh, UFO experts, uh, cryptozoologists, 
uh, speakers, equipment builders, um, psychics, tarot card readers, uh, vendors that make like the crystal jewelry and things like that. We have over 90 vendors that, that come in. There's actually a waiting list and there's been a waiting list to be a vendor there for the past few years. And I want to say the last, uh, I hope I don't get this wrong, but the last time I asked somebody what our waiting list is, I want to say that we had a waiting list of like 75 people oh, wow. vendors that we're already full but we always take kind of alternates because you know somebody gets sick at the last minute or has a conflict and has to cancel and we'll move the next person up so um it, it's awesome like i said we do have um some tv talent celebrities come in they do some meet and greets pictures signing autographs you can actually buy tickets to ghost hunt with them wow um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's it's one of the largest uh, cons in our area, and and again, it's it's put on by our team. It's our it's hosted by our team, um, and we basically don't sleep for three days setting up and running the event and tearing down and all that. But um, it, it's an amazing event, and we just have we have celebrities ask to come. You know, a lot of these Paris icons. Wow. You, you're calling the celebrity saying, Hey, I have this con. Will you come to it? And, and we have, you know, reached out to some people, but a lot of times they're reaching out to us saying we want to be there. And, and that's really awesome. I think that's how, you know, you've got something going, you yeah, got something serious. good going. Wow. Well, exactly. congratulations. I'm going to attend hey. that. You said that's in May. Yep. It's in May okay. every year in May. I'll have to see if I can find some information to put into the description of this episode Absolutely. to help lead people and over the, that way. The dates and everything and um, <clears throat> information about some of the extra tickets that you can buy are on there. It's free to get into our event. You just have to pay to get into the Ohio State Reformatory. So whatever their ticket price is, you, you buy that at the gate and then you get into our event for free. Uh, nice. There are those other things, like I said, the celebrity ghost hunt and things like that. Those are additional tickets that you can purchase. Um, uh, but all of the proceeds after we pay our expensive go right back to the Ohio State Reformatory for their ongoing um, efforts to keep up the building and, you know, turn the lights on. And it's not sure. cheap to keep that building running. So things like that. Um, we love donating that back to them. Yeah, I, I've been following uh, them on Instagram for a long time. And to see some of these renovations, they've actually been able to get you know, Don, they're amazing. Yeah. They're amazing. The before so, and after pictures, yeah. you wouldn't even know that it's the same area. It's it's very special. That's awesome. Well, I'm going to have to it's make sure. A lot sure. of good people running that place up there. <laughs> Say again, I'm sorry. It's a lot of good people up there running that place. Yeah, it seems like it. It would have to be. Otherwise, it would already be on the ground, right? Right. <laughs> wow. Exactly. Well, Lisa, I want to thank you so much for taking time to tell us your amazing stories. I'm going to be thinking about that all night, especially the guy with the bird head in the plaid yeah. shirt. That's going to haunt me, I tell you what. <laughs> hey, but, hey, Jack, do you have a plaid shirt I could borrow for the evening? <laughs> sure. You don't want to be on the receiving end of that, Randy, man. If I see you coming up the stairs or anything, I might be afraid, but I'm I'm going to fight instead of flight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just be careful. <laughs> As there's a Jeremy shaped hole in the wall <laughs> <laughs> uh there'd be a randy bird head shaped hole in the wall that <laughs> night but, <laughs> but lisa once again thank you so much for being here and happy halloween to you thank you so much happy halloween happy halloween all right. And once again, that was Lisa Roris. We want to thank her as well for taking time to be here on the Halloween episode. Uh, part one behind bars. I thought that turned out pretty good, guys. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's I've worked with Lisa on a, a couple of investigations and it's she's awesome. Yeah. 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 I, that's uh, it sounds like it's a lot of fun what you guys are doing. But uh, if you guys are, if anybody's interested in checking out uh, the Mansfield prison, uh, Tri-C puts on the, the Paris Icon uh, in May. I believe it's May 16th through the 18th next year. Yeah, 16th through the 18th. Um, you know, it's Bigfoot, cryptids, aliens, ghosts. You can sign up for a tour with some of the uh, celebrities that are there with tables. And they also have like a big hearse. Uh, like a big hearse show with different types mm. of hearses and stuff like that. So it's like car show and ghost hunting and yeah, just good time. 
Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. And it sounded like a lot of the exhibitors are, exhibitors are set up in the actual like wings of the prison. Am I correct about that? I, I think that's how it works. Yeah. Wow, that's creepy, man. That would be creepy as hell. Hell yeah. It would yeah, be. you can always hear the wind whistling through that place, and you're sitting next to what, four stories high, like steel, like prison cells. Like, ooh. <laughs> People know. tap it on your shoulder. You turn around, and there's nobody there. People. Flipping your fucking hair and little <laughs> balls of light just happening around you. Like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, amazing stories all the same. Uh, and, and you can also check out uh, Tri C Ghost Hunters at tcghohio.org, which I'll also put a link for in the description below. But uh, unless you guys had anything else, I think that's the end of part one of our Halloween episode. Anything else, guys? More to come. Are you Stay scared tuned. yet? <laughs> Are you scared yet? You scared? You scared, bro? <laughs> we got more. If you're not, they're, they're getting better too. Oh yeah, they're getting better as we go, people. Not to say these weren't good. These were great. No. Just gotta. I put my foot in my mouth. I'm not. I'm just gonna shut up and keep going. Jack, <laughs> tell these people what they can find on our website, sir. Go to CandierPodcast.com where you can listen, like, follow, subscribe, become a patron, buy some merch, become friends with us. And if you'd like to be a uh, guest to promote your work, send us an email on the contacts page. I'm, I'll take it. You got the right. Yep. That's <laughs> find us on Twitter. Yes. Find Become us on friends, my children. <laughs> oh my God. We're going to get through this. People find us on Twitter at can dare pod on Instagram at can underscore air and on TikTok at can dare podcast. And at the website Jack was just talking about, candarepodcast.com, there's a few different ways to support us. There is a link to our Patreon. There is a link to our merch, uh, our merch store where you can get T-shirts, mugs, hoodies, hats, all that shit with our logo, cool designs on them, or on our Patreon page. A little bit of your hard-earned cash every month gets you access to a five-year catalog of uh, content we've been building. It's quite a catalog at this point. It would take you a while to cut through it. So I think either way, uh, you know, uh, your money's well spent. I, at least I hope. <laughs> I'm, oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's yeah. enough shit on there for. Yeah. Yeah, keep you busy I believe for a while. so. That's some of our best stuff. That's where we go to let our hair down, people. And uh, what else we got, Randy? Uh, no matter how you're getting your canned air fix, if you leave us a like and uh, subscribe to us, it helps us so, so much. Uh, and uh, shout out to evergreenpodcast.com, the network we are so proud to be part of. And if you were in the Columbus, Ohio area, uh, here, right, pretty much after this drops, uh, right around November first through the third, come see us at the Tour Gaming Expo at the Clum- uh, Convention Center. Yeah, at the Columbus Convention Center. Yeah, and shake some hands, kiss some babies, uh, press the flesh become with friends. The public. What's become that? Become friends. Yeah, we always <laughs> make a lot of new friends at these kind of things, don't we? We promise Jack isn't this creepy a person. A little bit, but. Not really. You both are creeping me out tonight. I got to be honest. (laughs) It's Halloween. Ooh, so creepy. All right. (laughs) (laughs) All right, everyone. Well, thanks for watching part one. Jump over to part two to see what we got coming up next. And until then, I am Jeremy Colley. I'm Jack Doherty. And I'm Randy Hardenbrook. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and happy Halloween. Halloween.